hello guys welcome back to my channel on today's tutorial i will demonstrate how to draft cut and sew a simple mermaid skirt hi my name is ayo and welcome to 011 clothing tutorials on this channel i upload diys pattern drafting and sewing tutorials if you haven't subscribed yet kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you. I'll be working with the following items. Paper scissors. Calculator. Tape measure. Ideally, a pencil should be used to draft a pattern, but for tutorial purpose, I will be making use of this green marker pen, rulers and curves, pattern paper. I will be working with the following measurements, hip circumference 43 inches, waist circumference 35 inches, waist to knee measurement 24 inches desired skirt length 42 inches so i have here my pattern paper and on the pattern paper i've already drawn a rectangular box because i intend to draft both the front and the back patterns within this rectangular box to estimate the width of the rectangular box i use the formula Hip circumference plus 1 inch for is divided by 2 and this equals to 43 plus 1 all over 2 and this is equal to 22 inches. So the width of the rectangular box is 22 inches as you can see. As for the length of the rectangular box, the length of the rectangular box is my full skirt length which is 42 inches. So as you can see, the length of the rectangular box is 42 inches. I also went ahead to divide the rectangular box into two equal halves vertically. This side will be the center back, while this other side will be the center front. Now I will go ahead to measure and mark 8 inches for my waist to hip line measurement. The standard is 8 to 9 inches, but you can measure this directly on your client. I will now square a line across horizontally like this to the center back and to the center front. Next, I will measure my waist to knee measurement and this is 24 inches. So I'll measure and mark 24 inches like this. From the 24 inch mark, I'll go up by 3 inches. And I'll mark the 3 inch points. So what I'm actually using for my waist to knee measurement is 21 inches and not 24 inches. I will now square a line out across horizontally to the center back and to the center front like this. And this is the hip, the knee line. You have the option of either using your exact waistline measurement at the waistline, or you can use an elastic or a rope at the waistline. If you decide to use an elastic or a rope, you will have to use your hip circumference measurement at the waistline. If you intend to use your exact waist measurement, use the formula waist circumference plus one inch for is divided by four plus additional one inch for the waist dart, and this is equal to 35 plus one all over four plus one inch for the dart, and this is equal to 10 inches. So on the upper starting line, which is the waistline, I will go ahead to measure and mark 10 inches for the waistline measurement, starting from the center back and the center front respectively. For the dart position, I will measure and mark 4 inches. And for the width of the dart, I will measure and mark half an inch on both sides of the 4 inch mark. 
I will square down the middle 4 inch point like this. The dart will end 2 inches above the hip line. I will now go ahead to measure and mark the 2 inches. Then I will go ahead to draw out the shape of the dart like this. I will now connect the 10 inch waistline estimation to the hip line like this. There is no need to do any calculation for the hips because the hip circumference measurement was used to estimate the width of the rectangular box. On the waistline at the center back, I will measure and mark half an inch like this. I will now connect this half an inch point to the hip line like this with a slanted line. It can also end 2 inches above the hip line, just like the waist that. I will now go ahead to draw the waist that for the front pattern, just like I did for the back pattern. If you are wondering how I got the 4 inches for the waist that position, I use 4 inches simply because this is the standard value used for the waist that position for an adult. For accuracy, however, to know your exact waist that position, simply divide your bust span measurement by 2. I will also go ahead to connect the 10 inch mark for the waistline calculation to the hip line like this. At the center front and the center back, I will measure a mark half an inch downwards from the waistline like this. I will now go ahead to connect these half an inch marks at the center back and the center front to the sides like this using my hip curve. For the skirt I intend to make, I will not use the exact waistline measurements because I intend to use side elastic waistband at the waistline. So I will use the hip circumference measurement at the waistline. So I will ignore the waist dart and the side seams. I will simply cut out the pattern straight in between the waistline and the hip line at the side seam. It is now time to shape in the knee of the skirt pattern. I will start with the front pattern. So on the knee line at the side, at the side seam, I will measure and mark one inch like this. I will now connect the one inch mark to the hip line like this with a slanted line. Once I'm done with this, I will move over to the back pattern. For the back pattern, instead of using one inch for the knee shape knee at the side seam only, I will use it at the side seam and also at the center back. So I will divide the one inch into two. At the side, I will measure and mark half an inch on the knee line. Also at the center back, I will measure and mark half an inch. I will now connect these two 0.5 inch points to the hip line like this with slanted lines. Next, I will go ahead to connect the knee shape knee points straight down to the aim of the back and the front patterns like this. Next, I will add one inch zip allowance to the center back of the pattern following the slant at the upper part of the center back and also the knee shape knee at the center back of the skirt pattern. So now I'm done drafting the basic outline of the mummy skirt pattern. I will now go ahead to cut it out. 
Because I intend to use side elastic at the waist of the skirt that I intend to make, I will use the hip circumference measurement at the waistline. So I will ignore the waist dart and the waist and the waistline measurements on the waistline. Instead, I will just cut out the pattern strings in between the waistline at the hip line at the side seam. Next, I will locate the middle points on the knee line and I will connect it straight down to the aim for both the back and the front pattern. For the back pattern, I will ignore the zip allowance when locating the middle points. I will now go ahead to slide the front pattern from the M to the side seam and the back pattern I will slide from the M to the side seam and the center back but I won't slash all the way through. So this is the front pattern which I slash from the M to the side seam and I've already placed another paper on, pattern paper underneath it. I will now go ahead to spread out the lower part of the skirt as far as I want to. When spreading, you should keep in mind the quantity of fabric you are working with. I will use the space at the upper part as a guide. I'll make mine about 1.5 inches. So I will I will mark the I will take note of the 1.5 inch. I will now sell tape the lower part of the skirt in place. So I will confirm the 1.5 inch again, then I will sell tape in place. At the M, at the center front, I will measure and mark one inch downwards like this. I'm doing this so as to avoid shortage at the center front of the skirt. I will now connect this one inch mark to the side like this using my hip curve. I will now go ahead to cut out the front skirt pattern piece. This is the back pattern piece, which I'll slash from the M to the side seam. I've already slashed it from the M to the side seam. I will also slash it to the center back because I intend to spread it out in both directions. So I will spread it out in both directions like this. You can also spread as much as you wish. I will use this space at the upper part as a guide. I will make mine one inch wide. I will now go ahead and sell tape it in place like this. I will connect the space in between with my hip curve. I will now go ahead to cut it out.
so these are the front and the back mermaid mummy skirt pattern pieces which i will go ahead to cut out on my african print fabric and lining fabric the front piece will be cut on fold while the back piece will not will not be cut on fold So now I've gone ahead to do the cutting, as you can see. I use half an inch seam allowance at the waistline. Then 1.5 inches for the side seam allowance and 1 inch at the hem. This is the front piece which I cut on fold. I cut on fold both on the lining fabric and on the African print fabric. So I'll go ahead to use my tailor's chalk my fabric marker to mark the wrong side of the fabric so as to avoid confusion while sewing and the lining is two inches shorter than the main fabric this is the back piece i cut two pieces on the african print fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric I use half an inch seam allowance at the waistline, 1.5 inches at the side seam and 1 inch at the end. I did not use any seam allowance at the center back because I've already added the 1 inch zip allowance at the center back. I will now go ahead to mark the wrong size of the back pieces. Because the side seams and the center back look identical, what I will do now is to notch the side seams of the back pieces so as to avoid confusion later on while sewing. And I've also gone ahead to cut out the skirt band which I've already interfaced and pressed the half an inch seam allowances in place. I've also pressed in half at the middle. It is 4 inches wide and the length should go around the waistline plus additional 2 inches allowance. These are the front pieces. The first thing I will do is to overlock the end of the lining pieces of the lining piece. I will now place the lining piece on top of the African print fabric like this. Right side to right side. I'll make sure that the two pieces are well aligned. Then I'll go ahead to pin in place first. After pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the back pieces as well. So now the stitching has been done and I've already turned the pieces to the right side. I've also ironed the pieces as well. These are the two back pieces. Right sides are together. I will align the two pieces very well. I will now go ahead to measure and mark 7 inches for the length of the zip opening like this at the center back. I will also go ahead to measure and mark half an inch all the way down to the hem. I will now take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch from the 7 inch mark all the way down to the hem of the skirt. After stitching, I will, I will fix the zip to the zip opening using the lab zipper technique. This is the back piece and I've already fixed the zip allowance as you can see. 
using the lab technique. I have a tutorial already on my channel on how to fix the lab zipper. The link for this will be above and in the description box below. I will now go ahead to place the front piece on top of the back piece like this. Right sides are together, right side to right side. I will align the two pieces properly. Once I'm done aligning the two pieces, I will now go ahead to measure and mark my hip circumference measurement on the waistline and also I'll mark the hip circumference measurement on the hip line as well. Alternatively, you can just go ahead to stitch the remaining one inch side seam allowance in place instead of marking your hip circumference measurement at the waistline uh, at the hip line. Both, both methods or techniques will give you the same result. So what I'm doing is just marking my hip circumference measurement at the hip line, at the waistline and also at the hip line. I'm using my hip circumference measurements at my waistline because I intend to use a side elastic at the waistline of my skirt. So I won't be using my exact waist circumference measurements at the waistline. I will now go ahead to do the stitching following the guideline which I have already drawn on the skirt. So now the stitching has been done and I have already turned the skirt to the right side. It is now time to fix a side elastic waistband to the skirt. I have a de detailed tutorial for this on my channel. Its link will be above and in the description box below. So now I've already gone ahead to fix the side elastic waistband to the skirt and I've also aimed the lower part of the skirt. And this is the final look of the mermaid skirt. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends when you to the channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.